this was a game from 2002, my last uh, junior under 20. I've played, uh, this was already my fifth one, and I was always unsuccessful because I was trying so hard to play well. This one was in Goa, beautiful place, uh, uh, beaches and the Indian Ocean, and I was just enjoying myself and not preparing much. And I was playing against uh, Luke McShane, and I was white, and I, I used to start either with red T or with d4, c4, so, and then g3. Some habits don't die soon. I, I was just always used to fianchetto my pieces, my bishops. Fianchettoing pieces is not a good idea. <laughs> Putting the queen on g2. So, d6, castle, knight c6. I c3 and rook b8. Uh, this move was becoming very popular. Back in the day, they used to play this with the idea d5, knight a5, knight d2, c5. But then I think Luke started playing it with c6 because tactically it works. It's this, uh, this is a strange variation. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was something like bishop. Five here takes takes, then queen d4 uh, f6 because e5. I think some tactics are happening here. Mm. Some beautiful tactics, if I remember correctly, of course. And then it was something like knight e3, d5, queen e7, bishop e6, and some huge mess. <coughs> and uh, players from Britain they love this type of mess. And normally, the way to beat them is to create something very dull, <laughs> which I succeeded. So I took d takes c. Um, yeah, I played b3, sorry. He went c6, and I just took. I've looked at this a little bit uh, before the game. Uh, because of tactical reasons, he cannot play knight e4 here. Ah, yeah, I also have to mention that if you play knight e4 here, it just loses the piece. It also doesn't work here. I mean, in the worst case, I can always play c7 and knight d5, and just uh, bring the bishop out. But uh, I think I have some way to punish black like this. I think it's beautiful. Bishop f4. Bishop here and uh, c7. Queen c7, knight d6. Big fork. And uh, yeah, I think this is very bad for black. And if rook d8? Rook d8, uh, good question. Does this work? It should work, yeah. Rook d1, bishop c7, a5 is also hanging. Oh, and that's... Just... Uh, or... I guess knight b5, as a matter of fact, is looking good as well, with the same ideas. So, therefore, uh, Black cannot do, create any mess, and he took knight takes c6. Uh, I was mainly analyzing b, c at home, and uh, I was thinking that white can play bishop d2. d5 I felt is a bit uh, too much to play with this knight because uh, I can probably take and play knight a4 and rook c1 uh, utilizing the c5 square. Uh, and then I slowly play with queen c1 trying to play bishop h6. I'm not claiming it's anything special for white. But uh, it's slightly easier to play, because you eventually have to play c5. You go like this, bishop h6, rook d1, knight g1. Uh, the center is in, under my control. Uh, and uh, it's probably a tiny bit better for white. And there is not much activity for black, because 
what do you normally do in such structures? You play for a5, a4, but here this guy is just completely blocking this a5, a4 idea. But this would have been, of course, the right way to play, and I think Luke played uh, bc against me in a later game. So he went knight c6, bishop b2. Now he went queen a5. Now he went queen c1. Uh, this setup uh, is very nice for white to play uh, queen to c1 or queen to d2. I think I've, I've played similar style uh, with um, Vashela Graf. Hmm. You know, you play like this, you play like this, you play like this. And then you slowly exchange some pieces. And then just this grip over d5, and because your rook is on c1 or queen on c1, b5 becomes impossible or too slow. And once a couple of pieces are gone from the board, uh, this uh, structure is just uh, guaranteeing quite a slight advantage. Okay, so he went queen a5, I went queen c1. Now if uh, black plays queen h5, I can even exchange the queens if I'm too much of a chicken, I'm slightly better. But h4 looks good. It's, uh, it better became uh, a well-known fact that once black puts a queen on h5 and you play h4, uh, this is not so scary anymore. Just put the knight on g5, you play rook d1, knight d5, uh, the queen might look active here, but in fact, uh, there is just tactically it doesn't work for black. <clears throat> so here, look, played bishop g4. Uh, what do you think he's trying to do after h3? Uh, okay, your black could take or uh -huh, go back? And take. Take. I'm looking at moves like knight e5 or knight d4. It's tactical, knight d4. And I cannot retreat with my bishop. Oh, be oh you take here. Yes, bishop <laughs> d2, queen c3. And black has an extra pawn. So he was trying just to... Uh, Trick you. Yes, or get, uh, you know, simplify the position. Because if I take EF, then D5, too many things get exchanged and black will slowly make a draw. But I just played Rook D1, Rook FC8. I think here he was uh, still uh, not understanding how difficult it's going to be for black. So. He was still hoping for some b5, but after knight d5, it becomes a very difficult position. Well, I'm trying to destroy your structure. You cannot tolerate this knight and play something like this because the queen g5 might come, you know. Takes and queen g5, everything is hanging. So he has to take. And I took on g7 first. Why not? Because king on g7 is always getting out the checks. He has to take. He took queen c7. And now he gave a check and he played f6. It doesn't look too scary for black, but in fact, it's a very difficult position for him because of my next maneuver that I want you to find. So we need to, so this query is now a bit weak. Mm -hmm. So a knight on f4 will not be, will not be bad because he's looking at squares yes, that yes. are, that are weak. So an idea could be knight e1, knight d3, knight f4. It's possible, yeah, not a bad idea. But uh, we have one passive piece and it has an ideal square. Hmm. So the queen is not doing bad, no? Yeah, the queen is fine. The knight could be improved. Mm -hmm. 
But what piece is completely out of place? Yeah, this roof piece. Yes. Uh -huh. And where do you oh, maybe envision here. it? Correct. Yeah, that's what I did. This is pretty simple. See one? So, one thing we need to know in these positions. If black takes, we always take with the pawn. If we can. Because an f4, this is just... Mm, to block everything. Horrendous uh, weakness on e6. Bishop will come. So here, uh, look went b6, rook c3. It's, uh, I'm not claiming this is winning for white, but it's very unpleasant because he doesn't have any active plans. I just bring the rook to e3 and then I can already think about knight moves because uh, I just have a total grip in the center. He went queen d7, I went rook e3. He went king g8. This is an unfortunate uh, mistake. He probably had to bring this bishop somewhere in g8. Just to stay uh, calm. You know, like rook e2 and bishop g8. Then I'll play h4, king h2, threaten bishop h3. It's a very pleasant position for white. Or even do the plan that you suggested. He went king g8. And here I went knight d4. Why not? Uh, black cannot bring his bishop back. So I'm ex exercising more control. So he took rook d4. Now it's a problem because uh, if he goes here, I just take and take on e7. So he has to go rook e8 or rook c7. But uh, I think it's about uh, the same. And here I went before. Now I'm somewhere trying to play c5. Uh, queen c8, h4. Now it's not clear what this black doing at all, because bishop cannot come back, because I take and bishop d5. Uh, king, uh, if king comes here, then some rook f4 you have to watch out for. Ah, here is e5, yeah? But I think uh, maybe some queen a3, yeah? Queen a3 is unpleasant. Because this bishop is so good, uh, it's not easy to defend the pawn. And then I might play for some c5 at some point. Um, or I can just, uh, if I want to, just play bishop f3 even exchange and start to play for h5. Anyway, here he went bishop d7, h5, bishop c6. And at this moment uh, I could uh, win the game immediately, but I didn't see it. I could just take, take and play queen c2. It's strange, but uh, it's impossible to protect uh, black's position against rook g4 threats. So if he goes, uh, I think, f5, uh, okay, king c7, I just take and play rook g4. And uh, against the 5 I think there is uh, takes and something like rook g4, yeah. And then, oh, and then the other rook. And here, just takes and rook e6 check. Think. Nice. Just take on f5 and it's mate. But I did not see it. But the move that I played also gives me a nice advantage. So the pawn was here. King is on g8. Yeah, rook is on d4. Just played bishop f1. Um, because I, I thought that, well, I'll just play rook h4 on the next move and bring the bishop to h3. And, yeah, here he committed the mistake. He played uh, queen f5. Now after rook h4, becomes evident that bishop h3 is even stronger. So he had to take bishop h3, queen g6, b5. With the idea of bishop d7. Of course, you don't really want to play a move like b5, but here it gains... Uh, Material. Mm -hmm. 
Bishop 8, Bishop D7. Game didn't last too long. Maybe he went uh, King F8. Yeah, if Black plays E5, I can just take and play Rook D3. E4, Rook E3. And I bring the Rook to F4, Queen to D4. And uh, Black cannot last too long because there's Rook A3 and just too many weaknesses. Yep. So, yeah, of course, here I, he played, uh, he tried to run away with the king. Played king f8, I took, took, and I went queen b3. I'm threatening c5 somewhere, and also bringing the queen to d3. Rook c8, queen d3. Well, my threat is g4, of course. And I prepare it at the right moment. G4 and Rook 7 check. And Rook 7. <laughs> Some tactics. Yes. So I think he went Rook 7. King H2. King D7, G4. Simple as that. So he went uh, Rook C5. Takes, takes. GH, GH. Uh, rook a3. Black cannot defend everything. He went a5 and the game finished pretty soon because uh, I think I just played a3, rook h3, brought the rook here and that was the end of the game.